Dr. Busse, you've been involved with the APRM for the last decade. Could you please describe the African peer review mechanism in a nutshell for us? Simply put, the peer review, the African peer review mechanism, is a self-monitoring instrument that African leaders have mutually agreed to undertake um, assessment of their performance in all areas of governance, political, economic, social, with the view of identifying the deficiencies of the governance uh, systems and come up with a plan of action that can help them uh, move forward in, in fostering socio-economic development. So what difference has the APRM made to governance in Africa during the first decade of its existence? There have been a number of significant contributions that the peer review has made to Africa's governance landscape over the last 10 years. But I'd like to basically point out three main uh, contributions. The first is the introduction of a new model of governance on this continent. The second is the actual shift in paradigm in the way African leaders and African citizens understand their role in enhancing governance on the continent. In other words, taking more leadership, ownership and responsibility for, for, for policy making. The third would be the fact that the peer review has, in a very benign way, legitimized the, some issues uh, that hitherto were not sort of discussed publicly by African citizens as well as African leaders themselves, <clears throat> i.e. systemic and structural issues that affect governance in general. Yes. There's also, I think, uh, a more regional orientation of policies. And that is to say countries are now beginning to compare themselves with each other within Africa than the traditional notion of comparing uh, themselves with countries in the north, in developed industrialized countries. So you find a lot of healthy competition in terms of policy making between Ghana and Kenya, between Uganda and South Africa, and so on. And that again is a significant uh, development because the whole north-south dialogue, north-south policy making uh, has not worked over the last 50 years or so. So overall I think the APRM has made a significant impact. And lastly, but not least, I think the whole idea, which I mentioned earlier, that the peer review, because of the findings and what we call the cross-cutting issues, the systemic structural issues of diversity management, the whole issue of elections and uh, violence, uh, the whole issue of uh, structural unemployment, poverty, corruption, uh, the links between elections and violence, uh, and also natural resource governance. These are fundamental structural issues that before APRM were not easily, comfortably discussed in the public realm. Part of the significant contributions of APRM has been the legitimation or legitimization of this of these issues and openly and publicly African citizens are now discussing these challenges as fundamental issues that ought to be confronted if good governance is to be enthroned on the continent. So I think if you look at it from these perspectives, the APRM has made a significant dent in the, in the landscape as well as in the psyche of Africans with regard to how development can be achieved through governance that is owned, that is led, and that is appropriated by Africans. That's a major breakthrough uh, over the last decade. Briefly, what are the major challenges currently facing the APRM and how should they be addressed? There are several challenges uh, that the mechanism has faced over the last 10 years, but I think the major one is that of institutional, organizational, and structural. Uh, by that I mean I think, in retrospect, the optimism uh, that greeted the initiative sort of blinded the, the, the original founders to the challenges of institution building. 
that is also part of the developmental challenge of the continent. And here I mean the governance structure is somehow weak um, from the forum to the panel, the secretariat and the focal points. I think the institutional role of each of these actors were not as clearly thought out in terms of possible conflict of interest, uh, possible capacity deficiencies, and simply what I call the dysfunctions of collective action in any kind of group, uh, you know, such magnitude, any project of such magnitude. You often come, uh, you know, come up with challenges that are purely human institutional behavior dynamics. So some of that have tended to impede the full potential of the mechanism. And I would really like to suggest that until we get it right, the institutional structures, the mandates of each actor, um, in fact, nothing short of a charter that would need to be signed among the member states who are participating in the APRM will solve this problem. Because there's a lot of voluntarism that uh, actors sort of tend to have a voluntary approach to things. And therefore, when things are always voluntary, the incentives are quite, quite few. So I think, really, this is the challenge that the mechanism, mechanism faces. And I, until we resolve that, I'm not very optimistic that we will get much. There are some interesting possibilities developing for the future of the APRM, particularly an envisaged African governance architecture and the possible integration of the APRM as one of the African Union organs, alongside the Peace and Security Commission, ECOSOC, NEPED, and others. In your opinion, what does the future hold for the APRM in its second decade of existence? Well, first of all, I think the APRM, because of its benign nature, has been accepted almost wholeheartedly by member states who participate in it um, as something useful that really can help change the governance landscape on the continent. And that will continue. That sort of attraction will still be there. As I mentioned, the next decade will pose challenges regarding institutional, institution building uh, and also capacity building for implementation. Nevertheless, I think there are different developments on the continent that point to an optimistic scenario. As you rightly pointed out, the African Union governance architecture seems to be maturing with all kinds of initiatives, including the African governance architecture, the uh, Charter on Democracy and Elections, the Peace and Security architecture, and, and a whole configuration of institutional frameworks that would definitely augment the utility of the APRM. The APRM, in fact, would play a central role in all of these institutional mechanisms that the AU has put in place. But as a unique instrument, it has its own merits, uh, and some of which include, uh, for example, its role in, 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 in managing natural resource governance. I think the, the recent wave of discovery of minerals on the continent, including oil, has sort of brought to the fore the need for a veritable governance system or, or mechanism that can help manage these resources. Hence, I think the APRM uh, has been singled out as perhaps one of the most effective ways to get this, uh, you know, this mineral resource governance in place. Thus, it will, it, it will gain a new saliency, a new set of importance that I think will continue to, to, um, to attract member states to join uh, the mechanism. But having said that, I think um, there's a need for a new set of momentum, a new set of leadership that is required at the continental level. As you well recall, the founding fathers have all disappeared from the political scene. President Becky, Obasanjo, uh, to some extent Bouteflika, he's still in power, but he's quite old, he's not longer as active. So the, the champions of the, uh, Abdullah Wad, who was also one of the champions of NEPAD, APRM, they've all sort of left power. But there's optimism, why? Because the new breed of leaders, and here I can think of the Arab Spring leaders. Egypt has a new leader, uh, Tunisia, uh, even to some extent Libya and so on. My sense is that 
these new breed of leaders will be interested in collective action such as the APRM in terms of governance at a continental level that will help them consolidate their own power but also continentally consolidate the process of democratization. Even in Senegal there's a new leadership. Ghana has just elected a much younger new leader. So by and large I can foresee that in the next decade or so we would have a rekindled interest in the APRM and I think that the mechanism would have matured enough, the challenges identified and some of the solutions uh, could be uh, applied so that the mechanism will really gain uh, its efficiency and effectiveness that was envisaged in the beginning.